What's up everyone, my name is Cam. I'm a certified dog nutritionist and founder of The Dog Nutritionist. This is my dog food review of James' well-beloved dry dog food. Um, in the review, we're gonna look at the ingredients, discuss whether they're healthy, whether the food is balanced appropriately for a dog. We are also gonna talk about what the healthiest diet is for a dog, so you can cut through all that crap and misinformation online, all the conflicting advice that you get, and just understand how we know what the healthiest diet is for your dog. So you can protect them, you can use that information to keep them alive longer and out of the vets and avoid those big vet bills. That really is the power of nutrition. And yeah, I know better than anyone how hard it is to find that simple information. So I've included it on this video. And i am also included how you can implement the healthiest diet in a cost-effective way. So hugely interesting stuff we're gonna talk about today. Let's get into James Well Beloved, which I think is a pretty terrible food. I honestly don't know where they get all these good ratings from. I know that I've been offered, um, you can pay for services that just give you good ratings. I know that that is an option. I'm not saying that that's what James Well Beloved have done, but, but from looking at their recipes, it would not surprise me just because the recipes are so bad. In this particular recipe, and they all follow a similar pattern, so if this isn't the recipe that your dog is eating, just follow along, it will still give you a good indication of how good your food is, or the, the recipe that you've bought for your dog. Tur turkey meal is the main, main protein source. That is a powdered form of turkey and it makes up 23% of the food. You then have brown rice and white rice that make up a combined 44.3%. And then you have oats which make up 15.2%. You've got a low quality protein source that doesn't even make up a quarter of the food. Then you have over 50% of the food can, is coming from carbohydrates which is way too much for a dog considering that they haven't evolved like us humans to digest carbohydrates and the majority of this food is, is carbs. Um, it's just uh, worrying. Then you have whole linseed for 3.9%, sugar beet pulp, which they give to horses, turkey fat 3%, turkey gravy 2.9%. That's just to encourage the dog to eat the food, it smells good. Alfalfa meal, pea fiber, and then some ingredients will be so low in the quantity that they'll be irrelevant. The analytical constituents, 23.5% protein, 10.5% fat, so that's 34, the 41.3, over four, I reckon over 45% of the food is carbohydrate in terms of that overall proportioning. That's way too high. And for seven pounds per kilogram, which is what the food costs, you could be making fresh food infinitely healthier for less. James Well Beloved is a terrible dog food. It is not healthy. Um, I'm sorry to break that to you. What I would say is that any damage done, or not any damage, but much of the damage done by long-term diets on a not so good food can be undone by a great nutrition. Um, and that's what we're gonna talk about next in this video. I'm gonna give you the simple and quickest version of how we know what the healthiest diet for a dog is. And without being condescending, to understand this part, you really need to understand what a dog is. And what a dog is, is how a wolf has evolved into the dog. It is the difference between the two that determines what a dog is. The wolf is the ancestor species of the dog. We domesticated the wolf and the adaptations to the wolf, the changes that were made, determine what a dog is. From a biological standpoint, dogs have changed their ability to digest non-meats and sociability. Those are the two genetic differences between dogs and wolves, the, the two main glaringly obvious genetic differences. The sociability part comes from us breeding the wolves that didn't shred our kids to pieces. The second part, the ability to digest non-meats, this is the most important part of what they should be eating, of course. Um, different dog breeds 
have developed different abilities to digest non-meats. And this is due to their exposure to non-meat diets, depending on the geography of where they came from. So the Saluki, for example, that was uh, originated in the Middle East, they are an ancient dog breed, 9,000 years old, and they've had the most amount of time and exposure to non-meats, to more starch-rich diets, which means they have more of the AMI-B2 gene, uh, a gene that allows for the pancreas to produce amylase to digest non-meats. What do wolves eat? A range of meats, raw bone or a calcium source, some grasses and maybe some berries. We still need to follow that pattern of a range of fresh foods, maybe three different types of meats that they get rotated around the year. You can do more than that. You need some organ because that's like the multivitamin, um, the meat being the protein, they get fat from, uh, they get energy from the fat. And then you have the raw bone. Dogs have a higher calcium requirement than other animals because they've evolved from this lineage of bone crunching carnivores. It wasn't just the wolf, their predecessor that ate bones. It was literally like four species that came before the wolf. There's 50 million years of evidence of these bone crunching carnivores. And you can still see that evidence in your dog's mouth. Quite literally, those razor sharp molars are for crunching teeth. Other evidence that dogs should be chewing bones is that periodontal disease is one of the most common issues that face modern dogs. And that's because they're not chewing bones, they're not getting raw bones. Then you have the non-meats and you can use the vegetables that your dog enjoys or the ones that provide health benefits. You can use fruits like berries, which have been shown to be anti-cancer, um, apple, you know, just, incorporate these non-meats into your dog's diet. In terms of carbohydrates, I don't recommend you go over the 20% mark and try to use squash and sweet potato, which are easiest on your dog's digestion. That really is how you piece together an understanding of your dog's digestion. It is the difference between the wolf and the dog, and the differences aren't that big. Then you look at your own dog, you incorporate ingredients that work for them into that model, and that's how you keep your dog super, super healthy. All of that stuff on balancing all these diets, the NRC, National Research Council, the AAFCO feeding requirements, the FEDIAF feeding requirements, it's all nonsense. It's all total bullshit designed to scare you off making, making food. Look at any animal that exists. They just get a range of different things, but they stick to a general balance. If you want to understand how to do that, or if you need recipes, get the ultimate doggy handbook. <laughs> I don't know why I call it that. Get the ultimate dog food handbook. And also I've got a free dog nutrition course here on YouTube that you can watch to learn to learn more. All right, so that's how we know what the healthiest diet for a dog is. How can you do that at a cost-effective rate? Because meat prices are extortionate. Dogs need lots of meat. They need some variety. How can you do this when you, know, you, you wouldn't feed yourself a diet that high in meat and you wouldn't spend that much money on your own diet? Well, you can source cheap meat online. I buy venison from a venison wholesaler. I buy the off cuts, which are the bit that the butcher, it's like, I found that butchers are pretty lazy. They're not like razor sharp with trimming the fat off of the deer. And they leave loads of meat on there. And you buy the off cuts and you just separate the meat from the fat. And it only works out to be about five pounds per kilogram. You have all this lovely, wild reared venison meat for five pounds a kilogram. And that is pretty much cheaper than any dog food you can get. Once you can source meat for around, you know, 10 pounds, less than 10 pounds a kilogram, you can make a homemade meal for your dog cheaper than buying a pre-made meal. And those meals are made from fresh foods, ingredients your dog likes, so healthy, so natural, so healthy, it's going to 
it's going to keep them out of a bet and it's going to save you money in those bet bills and it's most importantly going to mean that you get to spend as long as possible with your dog. So we know what a healthy diet is. It is possible to do in a cost-effective manner if you do the research into meats, sourcing good quality cheap meats, and if you have the recipes which you can find in the Ultimate Dog Food Handbook. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and if you have, I've got loads more on my channel. Please do watch them and share them with your friends if you think that they need some dog nutrition advice because everyone does. Everybody does.